Good afternoon. My name is Jenny Lesser and I'm the Business Development Manager here at United Training. Welcome to today's webinar, Power BI, Turn Data into Action, presented by our amazing applications instructor, Ed McRae. We are using the GoToWebinar platform for today's session, and we will share a copy of this recording with you. We encourage participation throughout the webinar, so please use that questions option in your GoToWebinar dashboard. United Training is excited to present this webinar today, so I will now hand it over to you, Ed. Alrighty, hello, 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 everyone, and welcome. Good afternoon, good morning, welcome to our webinar. This is Power BI, Turning Data into Action, and I am Ed McRae. I've been an applications instructor for 15 plus years. They say that I'm a seasoned instructor. Seasoned with what? Seasoned salt, garlic powder, I don't know, something like that. Uh, but I've been uh, teaching long enough to see, uh, in terms of Power BI, several different iterations of business intelligence solutions. And I can boldly say that Power BI is the best out of all of them in the progression that uh, we have gone through. Um, without further ado, let's take a look at what we're going to be discussing during this webinar. I want to talk to you about what Power BI is, what we're going to be able to use it to do. Uh, I want to show you how we can get started with Power BI. Basically, how do I get data into Power BI and then create basic visualizations? Um, how do I create reports and dashboards? And then we'll take a look at some of the different ways we can then take that data and then implement it throughout the rest of our organization in regards to sharing, giving people access uh, to our data. All right, so with that being said, let me go ahead and I'm gonna actually pull up Power BI and let that serve as our backdrop here uh, as we talk about what exactly Power BI is, all right? So the BI in Power BI stands for Business Intelligence. Any kind of business intelligence platform, it's real, the, the goal of that platform is to take data from various sources, be able to pull that data into an environment, and be able to manipulate and ultimately analyze and display that data, okay? Let's speak just within a Microsoft world. Most commonly, the most common tool that's being used if you're not using a solution such as Power BI, the most common tool that you would use for business intelligence would be what? Yep, you guessed it, Excel, all right? Most people are using Excel. Inside of Excel, we're able to import data in to some degree. We are able to do some kind of reporting. We are able to generate dashboards and things like that, all right? Um, so Excel is, is a very good tool. We can do calculations and all that. Um, but there are some shortcomings that Excel can have in terms of business intelligence. Um, a few of those shortcomings will be, first of all, the amount of data that we can pull in. Excel only has 1,048,576 rows, right? So that limits us. And you might say, well, Ed, that's a lot of space. And it is, but in certain databases, you can have millions, multiple millions of records. And uh, so you can run into trouble space-wise with Excel. Another thing about Excel is that you have to basically create everything. So if I want to create a report, a dashboard, or anything like that, I have to use the tools that are available to me, you know, charts and pivot tables and things of that nature. But I basically have to create everything that is going to be visible inside of that workbook. There really are no tools, pardon me, that are going to help me out too much in that. Again, you have charts and pivot tables and things, um, but I have to do all the creating, okay? The biggest shortcoming I think that Excel has in terms of business intelligence is the fact that we are specifically in an Excel format, okay? What does this mean? This means, first of all, any individuals that we are going to give access to the data we would have to give access to that specific Excel workbook, all right, be it through a network drive or putting it in SharePoint or something like that, right? So they all have access to that same exact file, which means if somebody were to have an oops moment inside of the file or they would delete it by mistake, all of our reports, all of our dashboards, and all of our data is potentially gone, all right? And unless you have a backup, you're not getting that back. So that's a shortcoming. But then also we have to worry about people actually having Excel. We have to worry about people having the version of Excel that we have. Um, and as you start getting into newer iterations of Excel, like 365, 2019, 
if somebody is still using Excel 2010, which some people still are, or even Excel 2016, there may be some features, some graphical features, some display settings and things like that that are in, um, and definitely some functions that are in the newer versions of Excel that you will not find in those older ones. And so the experience might not be exactly the same for everyone who we want to look at and use our data. So using a tool like Power BI is going to really enhance and take us to the next level as far as our manipulation and the presentation of our data. Uh, first of all, we are pulling the data. Well, you have two options, and I'll show you those options uh, in a moment. We could, let's say we're coming from Excel. Uh, I could strip the data out of Excel and just pull it into my Power BI environment. That way, it doesn't matter if people don't have Excel, right? I'm, we're not using Excel. We're just grabbing the data out, and I'm going to build everything inside of Power BI. But if you are someone who maybe some of your, you're like, well, this new Power BI, you know, maybe for new data sets to do that, but we already have a great functioning dashboard and, you know, we've taken a lot of time developing this in Excel. Not to worry, you can actually connect or pull your full Excel workbook um, into Power BI and have people just view the workbook uh, in dashboard form in Power BI as well. Okay, so it can kind of work with both. But then outside of just Excel, and I use that as an example because that's what most people are using, um, we can pull data in from all kinds of different places. Maybe you're using SQL Server. Uh, maybe you're using Oracle. Maybe you're pulling data in from, I don't know, Salesforce or just some other kind of database platform. We can pull data in from all kinds of different places, and then we can do things with that data. Okay. So in short, Power BI is going to allow us to A, import data from where wherever i want basically once i get that data in i'm able to utilize the visualization tools that are there so i don't have to create everything manually there are some i'm going to create but there are some already preset tools i can use and just drop information in they'll generate visualizations and things for me very easily and then i can share that data out with anyone within my Office 365 platform and possibly outside of it, if your organization allows that level of access and people can see that data and interact with it even without having to have Microsoft Excel installed on their computers or have a specific version of Excel at all. Okay, so that is really, really cool. Now, there are two um, platforms or two ways you can access Power BI. On screen right now, you see that I'm inside of Power BI in my web browser, okay? And this is where we would go typically to do our dashboard creation. This is where we would go typically to uh, share our data out, or you could even in here pull data sets in and create reports as well. There is also a desktop version of Power BI. You can see this little down uh, download arrow in the upper right hand corner here it wants me to download and install the desktop version of Power BI. Okay, the difference between the two is this: the desktop version of Power BI is going to be more robust in terms of the behind the scenes and the setup of our data. Um, if I want to be able to connect to databases like SQL Server or things like that, I can only do that through Power BI Desktop. We'll see that in a moment. Uh, if I'm pulling in multiple tables, multiple sets of data, and I need to create relationships for any of you database people out there, I'll need to create relationships between my data. You can only do that in Power BI Desktop, okay? If I want to manipulate my data and create like calculated fields, again, for you database folks, create formula things to adjust and manipulate my data, that can only happen in Power BI Desktop. Okay, so if we need to do any more extensive setting up of our data, combining of our data, manipulating of the data before we start creating reports, and you can also create reports and do your visualizations and things in Power BI Desktop. Um, but uh, if I need to do any managing of the data and you know all that kind of thing, cleaning up of the data, if you will, before I start doing that, then I have to use Power BI Desktop. If I'm satisfied with the way my data is already set up, I don't have to use Power BI Desktop, uh, although you might want to. I can just pull it right into Power BI Online and do my thing, okay? And even if I'm using Power BI Desktop, ultimately I would end up publishing it to Power BI Online. So this online platform is where we would access all of our data and be able to share it out, okay? Um, now, how did I get here? I simply got here by going through my Office 365 portal, right? So I'm sure you guys know, you would go to portal.office.com. You would log in using your credentials. 
Power BI would be one of the apps that's available in your waffle underneath all apps. You should see Power BI. If you do not see Power BI, it may be that your organization is currently blocking it, or it may be uh, that you need a different license. I do believe that Power BI does require um, a next level license up from the base license of Excel uh, or from Office 365. At least that definitely was the case in the past. So if you're looking around for Power BI and you're not seeing it, uh, get in touch with your ID. IT department, get in touch with the, uh, your uh, superiors, the powers that be, and just ask some questions and they could possibly make that available to you, okay? All right, once we click on Power BI, this is where it brings us. I wanna go quickly through the environment here. Uh, it starts us off on the Home tab and here we can see it just gives us some general things. I could create a new report right from here. This is assuming that you already have a data set in place, which I do. Um, I could get to my workspace here, which is my personal place where all of my data would be uh, and what have you. We'll talk about workspaces in a moment. It also is going to give us some options here. It's gonna show us data stories from the Power BI community. So you can see examples of dashboards and things that were created throughout the community. There's also a getting started area here that's gonna give us some training and some help. I really like how Microsoft has built uh, training components right into the platform, especially with Office 365. So we can get into some of those trainings right here and figure some things out. And uh, then down below, we will see a recent area. This is where, again, I can see uh, data that I have access to, whether I created it or not. Um, and then there are also some recommended apps that are down at the bottom for our use, okay? Okay, moving quickly through our environment. On the left here, we have a favorites area. Anything I have favorited in regards to dashboards will show up here. I have recent. This is where I can see uh, any data sets, reports, or dashboards, right? As you can see, uh, I've got my workspace here. If I had other workspaces that I had access to, I would see in here also. Here I see a dashboard that was created, and also here is a report that I created, okay? Here's my create area here. When I go to create, I can get data in place, all right? I can paste data in, publish data. Here's my data sets area. This is where I can see my data sets. I only have one data set in place already. I already created it uh, just so we could have it here and um, we will use it to create a report or two in a moment. Um, apps, this is going to show me any apps or, which are collections of dashboards in one spot. I don't have any, but it'll show me that. Shared with me, this is going to show me any dashboards that have been shared with me by others. As you can see, I've got a couple of those here. Here's a discover area that is going to again allow me to see different dashboards from throughout the community. Here's that learn area. So we have a whole section dedicated to learning. And I can, again, get training here on Power BI. Here is my workspaces. Let me say a word or two about this. So workspaces are going to give us access to um, any other uh, Microsoft groups that we are a member of. If any of you have ever dealt with SharePoint or Microsoft Teams, you are loosely at least familiar with Microsoft groups, right? Well, one of the things that comes with a Microsoft group is a Power BI workspace, okay? And as you can see, I have several workspaces here that are available to me. So if I'm working inside of a department or with a group and I want to have a set of dashboards or reports or things that are available uh, to our entire group, I can develop those things directly in that workspace. And then everyone who's in the workspace can then have access to that dashboard. This is something that we can also make available inside of something like Microsoft Teams as well, okay? And then here is my workspace. This is your personal workspace. All of your data sets, all of your reports, all of your dashboards are going to show up in here, okay? So looking at what we have here, I have a data set that I already imported. Let me just walk you through how we would import a data set and then I'll quickly move into uh, some building a report based on the data set, all right? So in the upper left-hand corner here, I see new, and I see from here I could do a new report, a new paginated report, a new dashboard, a new data set, right? I'm gonna choose data set here. Let's look at the options that we have. 
Uh, I have the option to discover data that has already been set up within the organization. So if apps were published within the organization by our administration or by other individuals, I could go and connect to that and, and get to that data, all right? And then here I can create new content. And we have two options here. One, I can pull in files. So bring in your reports, workbooks, or data from Excel, Power BI desktop, or CSV files. So we are limited there. And then I can access databases. You can see here it says I have to use Power BI desktop. It tells me that right here to connect to data in Azure, SQL databases, and more, okay? Uh, it, the Power BI desktop is a part of the license. If you have access to Power BI, I could click Git right here, pardon me, and be able to install and da download and install that, or I could use the download arrow again that's in the upper right-hand corner to do that, okay? Um, if I wanted to pull in a file, let's demonstrate that. I'm gonna go to Files, I'm gonna say Git, I can choose where I want my file to come from. Um, I can pull in a local file or I can connect to my OneDrive. Let's connect to something in OneDrive. I see that it will load up and give me my OneDrive stuff here. And I could go into my particular folders. Let's just find something here that we may want to be able to connect with. Um, let's use this guy right here. I could say connect. When I say connect, I can do one of two things as we see here. I could choose to import my data into Power BI, or I could choose to connect it to Excel and, and view it in Excel or through Excel in Power BI. All right, so I can see it exactly as it is using Excel online. So again, if you already had a set of dashboards and reports or what have you created inside of Excel, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. We can just migrate that right on into Power BI and have people view that through the Excel online tool, okay? Uh, I'm gonna go ahead here and say import, and it's gonna process, it's gonna go ahead and import, and um, here you can see that this one is letting us know that there's no data tables inside of your data source, which is why I chose this file. I want you to see that if we are importing from Excel, you do need to have your data set up as a table inside of Excel first, okay? All right. Okay, so I already have a data set here that I wanna work with. I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. And when I click on it, it is going to give me the ability to either analyze this data in Excel or create a report. And that's what I wanna do. I wanna go ahead and create a report. And uh, here it is. So I click create report. Here is my report. Let's look at what we have here. On the far right-hand side, I have my fields area. And in my fields area, I can see the different tables. Again, it has to be in a table format inside of Excel uh, in order for you to uh, access the data. So I've got four different tables in here. Now, if there are no relationships between these, uh, this data, I am not able to create those relationships in Power BI Online. I would have to use Power BI Desktop, okay? There's no relationship uh, tool built in. Uh, there's always been hopes that, that that will be added in. As of now, that still has not yet happened, which kind of makes me think it might not happen. <laughs> but more of the story is use Power BI Desktop for relationships and such. Then I have visualization. So I'm just going to expand this invoices table because that's the one that I'm going to use to demonstrate. We have all these different visualizations. So as I start dropping information out, I could either drop a visualization out here or I could drop data out and then change the visualization. I'm gonna drop out some data. I'm gonna grab salesperson, and I'm just gonna drop that right out here. It is going to connect and display. The default visualization is gonna be a table. Okay, so if I drop that out there, it is a table. Uh, let's keep it simple here. I wanna take a look at the sum of extended price for each salesperson. So I'm gonna grab extended price, drop that out there. Boom, there we go, it calculates for me. That's fantastic. Now, as you can see here, I can grab the handles, I can resize this visualization. It gives me guides for aligning. If you're like me, I like stuff to be symmetrical and in alignment and all that. So it helps me out, it affords me an opportunity to do that, so that is cool. I can also just click and drag to move this visualization 
wherever I want on my report. So I think for right now, we'll just put it in the upper left-hand corner. Now, while I'm clicked on this visualization, I can change it. I'm gonna click on a chart here and it changes that now into a chart. And you can see here, as I am moving between my different visualizations, just clicking on different visualizations, and it is changing it for me. This is fantastic. Now, of course, depending on the visualization that I have, and I'm just going to enlarge this just a little bit for now. Depending on the visualization that I have, you'll notice that it looks very similar to a pivot table if I look over here, where it gives me the different sections of that visualization. So I see I have an axis here. I have a legend area here as well. Let's say I wanted to drop, uh, let's see, do we have a region? No, we have country. Let's say I want to drop country out here into the legend area. And boom, now my data is displayed. Let me change it to more of a cluster column. Uh, now my data is displayed in this way. Okay, I can see all my countries up there, what have you. And I can remove this, right? I can hit the X to get rid of it. It'll go back to what it was before. Okay, maybe I want it to go back to being a regular table. I can do that. All right, so I got a table here. Let me just quickly make a couple other visualizations. Just check our time here. Check, uh, create a couple other visualizations. I'm gonna click on the blank area out here and I'm gonna click on one of my cluster charts and boom, it puts that visualization there. I can then place this wherever I want even though I don't have anything in it yet. Okay. And now I can start dragging things into that visualization. I'll use my axis area here. I will drop also uh, extended price. So I'm looking at the same data, just different ways. Okay, so I'll drop that there like so. This is cool. And uh, let me resize this a little bit. Uh, how about we get a map going out here? So I'm gonna drop in a map. Let's see how this works. And I'm gonna grab, now notice over here that it is giving me um, the data type, I can see a little globe here letting me know this is a location. So I'm going to drop country in there. All right, cool. It's showing me the countries. And I'm going to go ahead and grab quantity. Let's drop that in here too. I can see that now it is automatically changing and showing the quantity based on the size of the circle. All right, so that's fantastic. This is great, right? So we got a nice look and report going on here. Um, I may want to insert some kind of filter. I noticed that there is a filters area right out here. If I wanted to do that, I could drop something in. Let's grab company name and uh, drop that into my filter area here. And I could check this and filter for a particular company. Right, and it's filtering that visualization for that company. Okay. I could also apply, let's get rid of this. If I click on the page as a whole, I could also apply a filter to the page. And now if I were to go ahead and filter something, it's filtering everything, right, on that page. Okay, so this is fantastic. Okay, so very simple. And we could sit here and play with these visualizations forever and ever. Um, but you see the idea. Now I could also do a slicer. Okay, if you've used Excel, you're used to that. I could do the same thing that way. Let's put the company name in the slicer. And now it's out here and I could filter all my data using this slicer. Okay. So we can drop in whatever we want. I'll do another slicer for product. Why? Because I want to. We can drop in whatever we want and it is working for us. All right, this is fantastic. Now, I could go ahead and let's uh, clear that out. I can go ahead and go to file and I'm gonna save this report. I'm gonna give this a name. I'm just gonna call this sales analysis. Okay. And now this is a nice report based on my data set. Okay. I can have multiple reports that are showing me multiple things, whatever things I want. 
this report seems to be kind of centered around salespeople. I could have a completely different report that's centered around products. I could have a completely different report centered around locations, right? You guys get the idea. And then what I can do, you notice across the top, even with just this report, I have an option to export it. I can export this to PowerPoint or to a PDF, or I can analyze it in Excel. I can also share my report or make it an embedded report in SharePoint, right? Or publish it to the web somewhere, right? All that stuff can happen for me. I also have the ability to connect this into Teams as well, all right? Now, if I wanted to, I could take any of these elements and I could, if I go to the um, upper right-hand corner, there is a pin option. And if I click pin, it will allow me to pin it to a dashboard. And a dashboard is then something that can have elements from multiple reports combined together. So I'm gonna go ahead and pin this to an existing dashboard that I have. I'm gonna go to that dashboard. And there we go. So I have this happening. I can move this around. I could have other elements on this dashboard from other reports. Uh, in the interest of time, I won't be able to do that for you right now, but that is something that could happen. Okay. So we see here that we're easily able to pull data into Power BI. We are able to manipulate that data and we are able to then uh, display that data in different ways. All right, we have come to the portion of our webinar where I'd like to open things up for questions. We're coming towards the end of our time. If you do have questions at this time, you can enter them into the Q&A area and uh, let's see what we have. Don't be shy. Go ahead and ask any questions you might have, please. Hi, Ed, that was great. It was so cool. Um, we do have one question from Alice. She wanted to see if you can share what data file you used for this demonstration. She was hoping to see what that data set looked like and what formatting was in the Excel file. Uh, absolutely. Just bear with me for one moment and I will pull that up. So there's no real uh, formatting that's required other than the data being set up as a table. Where'd you go? Come back, there you are. All right, so the only real formatting you're gonna see is that the data, and here is the actual data set that I'm using, is right here. The only thing that matters really is that the data is set up as a table. Okay, It needs to be that in that format in order for Power BI to recognize it. Um, and then of course, you know, like formattings and things like that. Um, if we needed to, if I wanted to relate like this data, like I'd like to be able to relate this data set to my salespeople data set over here in order to do that. And then I have a separate company data set too. Like I'd like to be able to relate all that. In order to do that, I would have to use Power BI desktop uh, or you'd have to use like a VLOOKUP or something to get everything into the one data set first. All right, and then we have another question from Bob. Is it possible to integrate a Power BI dashboard in a SharePoint web part? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, you saw an option for that. I didn't show you with the dashboard, but we saw that with the report uh, where you were able to go ahead and export that to SharePoint online. Also, if you were in SharePoint online, it would be as simple as uh, going to edit your page, and when you go to add a new web part, search for Power BI or just Power, Power BI would pop up and then you could choose whatever dashboard you wanted to implement into that page. Okay, great. And then Brenda asked if there's a tutorial on the Microsoft site for this. Um, and then before you answer, Ed, I was gonna let everybody know we'll follow up with some other webinars we have planned at United Training and then related um, courses that we have. Okay, the best tutorial is again the learn area. Uh, so far to go back over to Power BI again, remember on the left you have a learn area here. In here you have great tutorials to help you out. Um, learn how to use Power BI, start learning. It's going to bring me right in here and give you several different paths that you can take and then you could dive into those trainings. Great. And then we have two more. So one is what visualization layouts are most common and how do you configure one based on the requirements? 
Um, the first part of that, most common ones would be, uh, depending on if you want to see actual data versus seeing a, uh, like a visualization, uh, like a graphic, um, I would say the most common would be tables and like column charts. Um, but depending on your what you're trying to do, you know, there are tons of different visualizations you can use. What was the second half of that again? It was how do you configure one based on the requirements? Um, I'm not quite sure how to answer that. There are several different options when you click on a visualization, uh, if I'm still in there. Uh, there are several options if you click on a visualization for you to be able to just kind of change it. Um, so it really would depend on what you need to do. So like if I click on this visualization here, uh, come on, it's thinking about it. Uh, it would load up and give me, it's still loading, I think. Uh, I'll do this one. Uh, if I click on the visualization, it will load up and, oh, let me go to edit mode, maybe that's why. Uh, it will load up and give me uh, options over here to be able to configure it and as far as the fields, um, as far as the formatting, uh, everything is kind of hanging out right over in here somewhere. So it all really would depend on what you're trying to do. Okay, great. And it, it looks like we're over time, but Ed, if you could stay on for just one more question and then we'll follow up with the others. Sure. Um, Jennifer asked, if there are formulas in Excel, does that ex affect Power BI filtering? And as you make changes in Excel, does your Power BI update? Um, that does not affect the filtering. And yes, if you have a connection there and if you're using OneDrive, let me say, so like how I just did, I connected to OneDrive. It has to be in the cloud. It can't be on your local machine. Um, if it's in the cloud and you make adjustments to the data, uh, it will refresh for you. Uh, let me say as well, if you're using Power BI Desktop, you can build your own uh, calculations and formulas and things inside of uh, Power BI Desktop as well. Okay, great. So that we're over time. So that was a ton of great information. We'll let you guys go for the day. But thank you so much, Ed. And we will share a copy of the recording with you. If we didn't get to your question, we will follow up with you um, after the webinar. So thank you so much.